Hey guys, uh, so chapters 15 and 16, uh, really important chapters. They talk about democratization. And among our case study countries, there's definitely some that are nowhere near democratization. Uh, but others are very much uh, in that direction. Remember, delegative democracy is a place like Nigeria where they simply hold elections somewhat fair but don't have those deep, deep civil um, uh, discourses. In places like Indonesia, though, we're seeing a very different picture. So let's discuss a couple of these. So in the case of Peru, um, the textbook talks about the different candidates for president. Turns out Umala ends up winning. And Umala brings the country far to the right. Not super far, like fascist far, but towards uh, capitalism and free market economics. Uh, he makes close ties with the U.S. and actually uses the U.S. Uh, to help guide the country in making it more business friendly. Uh, they actually sent down lawyers there. Next case, Indonesia. Indonesia was fairly well run under SBY. Um, but one thing to notice is that SBY, like his predecessors such as Sukarno and Suharto, uh, were all part of this elite, super rich folks who unsurprisingly wanted free economics not because it was the greatest thing in and of itself, but because it made them richer. Um, that's why the recent election in fall 2014 was so revolutionary. Jokowo, Jokowi um, ends up winning this election, and he is actually an outsider. Uh, considered by journalists to be an incorruptible politician, he actually talked with the people and interacts with them. Um, in many ways, this brings to mind other uh, leaders such as Lula in Brazil, who were not only friends of the people, but effective leaders, as Jokowi has established himself to be um, due to running Jakarta in a fair and equitable manner, and, I should point out, successful. The final case is that of Good Luck Jonathan in Nigeria. He's up for re-election, and it looks like unless there's some giant swing in the votes or some election fraud ends up to be true on a massive scale, he is going to lose to Muhammadu Buhari. Remember, he's been heavily criticized for a number of reasons. As the text textbook talks about, he's really tried to hold on to power long after the oligarchical agreement of having a candidate from the north, then a candidate from the south, then a candidate from the north, etc. Um, in addition, he has really failed to contain Boko Haram, and is, is an Islamic extremist group that actually controls much of the north of the country and causes terror throughout the north and central regions.